The Rivetto has been updated with an 850cc engine and, believe it or not, a roof. This will open up new demographics and sales opportunities and hopefully lead the company to new growth. And with the new facelift done, it's time to start the next one, which shall further improve the capabilities of the car. So we'll try to max out the engine performance and also prepare ourselves for a launch of the model in Dalua. There are rumors that the borders will open up in 1950 and we need to be prepared. The people there expect higher comfort and prestigious cars, so maybe we can finally mount a radio in our car. We will definitely not neglect the core values of our company, lightness, nimbleness, sportiness, but we need to make small compromises wherever possible because we also see that the money lies in prestige and that cars will be more complex in the future and we need to find a way to survive. So the only way to survive is higher margins. The next goal for this episode is to develop a new engine. There are rumors that Lorenzo Antonelli is experimenting with a two-engined chassis but never has brought the concept out of the shed because of big issues of packaging and the drivability. So the next try will be to make a V8 out of two inline fours, basically doubling our capacity there. This will probably not go into the Rivetto. We'll work on a successor model in the next episode, but we already need to get started with the prototype engine as we want it to be a good engine and extract a lot of power from it. So I'd say let's get started and check where we are. We see that we are currently selling only into light sports and one into light sport premium so we start to open up the market for us and we are the fifth largest supplier of light sports cars into the market because also the 750 model is still selling there so with the first facelift finished let's start with the next one first off we need to upgrade the engine and the next common class in sport car racing was the 1.1 liter class, so we need to see how much we can extract out of this. So already here it says 1.2 liters is our max family capacity and we need to check how we want to achieve that. We can go over the safe bore, which is at, at 70 millimeters, but then we already see effects on reliability. We will do that a little bit, but not max it out. So we will go one millimeter maybe above the safe limit. Well, let's make it 1.5. Let's go with the stroke to 66.5. I need to still make sure that this engine revs so that we extract a lot of power from it. So that's our setup. We see that we run into issues here with our Conrod. We need to make sure that it revs and invest a bit of quality. But already the Conrod is pretty much stressed. So let's try and see if we can get a higher reliability number by increasing the bore and reducing the stroke. Yeah, it's basically the same. So I can use all the bore and reduce the stroke a bit. In general, the power curve looks nicer with lower bore. So let me try, optimize this. Yeah, definitely. So we lose a bit of peak power, but in overall the power curve is better. So let's not overdo it. Go to 71 and basically have a square engine. And then we need to reduce a bit the max RPM. And it's already much better if we go for just cast pistons. Even though we run into the power limit there of the pistons, but yeah, at least the Conrods are not giving up. And it's even better with light pistons. So here's the comparison between old and new. So we see already a big improvement. Okay. Let's try to optimize. And I guess we're no longer getting away with a single eco carb. Twin is definitely better, but it also will cost a lot more. It's a hundred bucks. The power difference is not enough and still this engine must be cheap because we are not producing it ourselves. And we also want to do it within a reasonable amount of time and we don't have a lot of budget to make this facelift happen. Alright, I think that's it. 
looking great with 55 horsepower. So now people have also requested side mirrors. I'd say the Competizione doesn't need them because we have one here to look behind. But still it will get indicators because let's say the Lua needs them. And then let's fix our number plate here. Let's also say the new engine needs more cooling. Also align them a bit more properly. And let's also give it nicer headlights without that element on top. And here we have the indicators as well. Also new rims with three options for the hammer. So this will improve our pit stop times, I guess. Again, longer gearing. Let's see if we feel a difference or not. Tires are still pretty much maxed out. And yeah, the Competizione will still stay our basic model. Every, everything is fine here. The Millimonti version will get a roof in red this time. And also get the three spoke design here on the wheel nut. So for this one, um, we will add the mirrors. And because of all of the prestige that this car has, let's also try to make a grill out of this. Alright, and I think these are the upgrades for this model. Definitely looking more prestigious now, right? Then the most important change, a radio, giving us 7 points in comfort and 12 in prestige. And now we should definitely get into the Light Sports Premium. We leave the rest as it is. You could definitely put in more quality to improve the car in general, but this still will eat into your margin and I want to be efficient. So no quality for now. There we have them. And engineering time is looking excellent. Even though we are extracting a lot of knowledge and have no funding, we can still get this one done. And I want to get it done within two years. Two years means we will open up the Lua and then we'll do a quick facelift to get it homologated there. And I can spend the time I have to make the production more efficient. Also, this will increase the project cost quite significantly, but I guess we need to invest that. Let's do it like this. 2.6 million, it's quite a lot. But the engine will be even bigger problem. Six million. So this one really has to take off then. And it's 3.4k. Compared to 3.2, it's $200 more, but it's more reliable and it's more powerful. So that is okay. Most of it is still coming from engine labor.
So I will now up my minimum shifts also to 1.0. Probably need to up the max shifts as well at some point. And we'll further increase our manufacturing capacities and capabilities. I need to refocus the middle Monty to the light spot premium. Then it will also give me better overview here about desirability and their progression and it looks like they will be pretty good. I would love to see um, minimum safety requirements in, in the Lua, but I hope it's worse in Frenia than in the Lua. We will see, we just have 10 safety. I didn't find out what the minimum safety is, I looked everywhere. The only way for me to find out is probably to start a new campaign in the Lua and see what the minimum safety requirements are. So let's just hope we'll be fine. So our budgets currently say Light Sports is 13.9k and Light Sports Premium is 22. So let's do it maybe like this. Increase the deposits. And it looks like we definitely need a minimum shift count of 1.5. And I will do that now. From a roleplay perspective, I know I said that Lorenzo didn't want to spend more than one shift and so on. But by now, as I said earlier, we are bigger than Ferrari was in 1960. Yeah, we definitely have somebody to take care of all the stuff and so on. I mean, we have now with these settings, we have 101 employees only in the factory, so somebody will take care of them. Also, let's say max shifts is not 2, but 1.8, so that 0.1 shift is still available for Dolce Vita and Siesta. QA, we already had our QA issues, but it's also a huge slowdown. I'll just keep it at 70, uh, we have to live with these recall chances. A bit better tooling maybe doesn't cost as much and that should reduce the chances a bit okay so now cost we still have very nice looking margins there um, I will go with this setup I think it looks very promising the question is now only can we afford this so this is now 5.7 million we have 350k in the bank and I am not sure how much we will earn Let's say we get 200k a month, that would be 4.8 million over the course of two years. So not exactly 5.7. So we need to get a little bit from the bank, but they are a bit unsure about our capabilities and if we should get that high amount of money. So we even won't get the full 5 million from them. I would like to take out 2 million and we get that at a reasonable interest rate in this setting. 33% says 2 million total loan and let's repay them 30k per month or maybe a bit quicker go for 40k per month I think this is a reasonable setting and I hope this loan is enough okay profits are 124k but 230 K for engineering are already considered, that means we should be fine. Also don't forget we are still selling off a bit of our stock, so I'm not completely sure. Let's take a look into R&D and see when we want to start our engine. In 1950 we get the aluminium headers and I definitely want to use them for my next generation engine. I cannot afford to do research, so I guess we'll have to wait. Yeah, we'll definitely wait until 1950 for the new engine prototype. And until then, this car needs to hold up. Oh no, also the tax man will take 34.2k of taxes. We need to better avoid taxes. So far I'm turning a nice profit, even now that we have completely sold off the old 750 version. But we also need to take care of our quality issues we are collecting. So again, a very small issue, but it's difficult to fix. So I never had this kind of combination. 
and even though 122k or 41k are not that much. I can imagine that Lorenzo says, ah, what's the issue? It's just a small problem and nobody will find it. 159 cars have been built and probably one or two screws are loose. Well, this time I'm doing nothing and I'm just looking forward to see if this will happen or not. Okay, let's do nothing, right? Just for tax avoidance, I want to check if we can invest into a new plot. So at some point I want to go to a small factory at least for our mass production models and keep the farm shed for more specialized vehicles, let's say racing, maybe move into supercars at some point. So I need at least a small plot for a car factory. And I would also like to build my own engines at some point. And that's probably the more pressing issue because the engines are so expensive and also the V8 engines will be even more expensive. So let's just see how much a small plot costs us. And let's start with engine factory. And a small plot is just 1 million. And I think we can afford that. But let's wait until December to make the, the final decision. Currently the plots are a bit cheaper because we're in a recession. So we should get started soon. So 60.4%. And they are slowly rising in price, but still not very expensive. So collect a bit more money. No. <laughs> The public has discovered the small issue from the farm shed. Uh -huh. Okay, only 1.2 and 0 0.9 damage. I thought it was 10 times that. Ah uh, no, that's a different one. That was the one from one and a half years ago. And it was the engine problem. That was a small problem, and but this time low cost to fix. So this was a very small issue. So let's accept that. Probably the discovery chance was higher there. Okay, it's December, so our prestige has dropped and the reputation as well, but we are slowly climbing up again. We want to avoid the taxman because of our massive, massive profits, but let's buy us a plot for a new engine factory. Also in Fruinia, small. And while we are not yet building a factory on that, we will of course use the newly acquired land for some farming, for some crops. So for now let's plant some wheat. Uh, not wheat, wheat I mean. Um, and I don't want to have a factory on there, I just want the plot. And I do that. I want no factory on top of that. Maybe I'm just too stupid, but I thought we could acquire land and not build a factory. Because it's also possible in the campaign start but somehow I don't find a way how to build a plot. So I messed it up. Um, the taxman will be happy. I should have invested in research. So let's at least do it for now. It would probably make sense to go into engine architecture, but that's very expensive and I don't think I can afford it. I put one more click into wheels. It's much more, much, much cheaper. Oh, nothing paid to the taxman. How could we avoid that? Probably because all of our revenue is coming from loans. And I also think this value here is not correct. There's 76K and I'm getting that per month. So this one is probably 76 times 12. And then we get definitely more than this. And then it makes sense that we don't pay taxes because all of my profit is coming from loans. Yeah, you see it also here that the loans don't count towards this pie. They count towards total revenue. And it's just a display issue because 8.28 million is this value plus this plus 12 times this, I guess. Okay, so what is our production doing? We have a bit of stock of the Millimonti version. But still, the competizione is being requested a bit more. So about one month of production is still remaining in pre-orders. So we are on a good track there. Running at one shift maximum. And now that also our other cars are being pre-ordered. So for example, the 
1.1 millimonti already has two pre-orders we are getting into the losses again but we also want to build a bit of stock so i think it's fine so yeah company valuation is a bit of a problem we are at a credit score of f and that's mostly because of our debt that we have accumulated but i still think we are fine Okay, now that production has stopped, we are back to profits finally. We have four months of Millimonti stock and one month of Competizione. And the new cars are already selling much better. And we are there. It's 1950. The Lua has opened up and we have our new facelift ready. And we still have 800k in the back, which is excellent. Because now we need to make a very, very quick update to get the Rivetto also into the Lua. I will not give it a different name, just name the facelift like it. And let's check the minimum safety. Minimum safety zero, excellent. Thank you, Dalua. So I will not change anything on the car, the car should be fine. 0.3 months is also nice, but Still, it will me cost me one million. Ouch. So in the Lua, we have access to seven people in Light Sports Premium. So in the beginning, we won't even sell anything to the Lua. And I am scared to sign this one off. Okay, but they would cover it with a loan even though my credit rating is F. I was considering first to do a bit of marketing in the Lua before I do um, the project, but I think we are fine. We will have to repay our pre-orders. And we have 69 pre-orders here and 47 here. That's about 110. And all of these are 25%. So that's 500,000 in remaining pre-orders. Oh, it's a hard decision. Do we want to repay them or do we just build a few? I guess we'll just build a few and already do a bit of marketing in the Lua. But we'll run at 1.8. Yeah, let's run at least one more month or two and then we'll get the facelift out. Yeah, I think now we're good. Now I also don't need such a big loan anymore, or not a loan at all, which is also good. Now it takes two months, oh no. That's the way it is. But we survived it with um, 600k still in the pockets. So I want to have one more month to really see how much I sell. Okay, that's a decent profit. And look at the markets we are covering right now. Looking excellent. We're also in the sports market. And in the Lua we are also already selling quite a bit. So now, the last to do for this episode. Of course, in the end, we will still do the test run of the 1100cc version, but let's work on the engine concept. So this one shall be our new V8 concept with two liters of maximum capacity. And again, this must be pretty lightweight and high revving. So lightweight you get with low bore, high revving you get with low stroke so we need to make a compromise there so with a bit of up boring we definitely get up to two liters and i definitely want to do that to <laughs> save a bit of weight but i also want to have a little bit of wiggle room with the stroke so let's plan for this and this and then adjust our variant accordingly. We'll go for direct acting 
which is the specialty technology for Fruinia. Even though it will hurt us when it comes to emissions probably. And we go for the aluminium head, which is a good choice for emissions. Oh no, it doesn't make a difference, the aluminium block is good for emissions. For the fuel system we will go to two barrel, that's for sure, and maybe even for twin. Long tubes and probably baffled muffler, we'll see. Can rev this quite high, but the crank does not want to hold up. So we need a bit of balancing mass or the harmonic dampers. Yeah, the harmonic damper helped a lot. Let's save some weight here. And then the only problem is, like always, um, our power limit, which can be avoided by using fast pistons. But then we also lose 800 RPM. We'll see how much we really have to rev. Yeah, we certainly can rev quite a bit. I think 8000 is a nice compromise. But it's better to increase and overbore than to run into RPM issues. Okay, so let's do it like this. Ninety-one is available in Fuenia, so should we go for it or should we go for the ninety-eight, which will also make Dalua quite happy? Excellent power we are getting from this one. Oh yeah, the race headers really get us a nice boost here. I think we need them even though reliability is bad, but I don't care. We we'll probably have to do two variants, one with race and one with the normal intake, but let's focus on the race version first, because that's how development is done typically. I want to get those 120. Now we have to prepare the engineering and yeah, it will take quite a bit of time, but it is just a prototype. So it would be great to have it ready at the beginning of 1953 maybe, so two and a half years is 30 months. We can do that with 3.6 million. It's not really expensive. We don't need a contract for it, just a prototype engine. Or do we want to do it in two years? It will be a lot more expensive then. We also want to learn a bit of it, so two years is not possible, I guess. Let's stick with two and a half. By then we should also have our radial tires, so that would be a good point to mount it then into a car and then develop this one for series production. So 3.5 million. I agree. And let's say we will not take a loan out. Can easily afford this. So let's sign it off. And let's let it run until 1951 and then end the episode. Oh my, so much profit we need to invest into R&D. So 300k of our total R&D cost is quite a lot. Yeah, a bit too much probably for our company. 
will also have to do a bit more marketing. And we're still making a lot of money and also have a lot of money in the bank. So let me check again if I can buy at least a tiny car factory for our new model. Put that on a small plot. That would be 2.8 million. It's a bit early. It's a bit early to do that. I don't want to be taken out of the game. Oh, another quality issue. This time with a high discovery chance. One month of production. 142 cars. Are we building so many cars per month? I am not sure. Reputation, I don't care so much about reputation, but more about prestige. So let's do a full recall for those. And we have reached 1951. Still no taxes. Interesting. I wonder if there's a bug or not, because this time I definitely have more revenue than expenses, even without the loans. But let's take the money. Yeah, we're selling so well. Most of it into light sports still, but also the sports market has opened up. And also a bit is going to Dalua already. Very nice. Still nothing to hit with here, but that was expected. So let's check our sales breakdown again. Mostly in light sport. And also it has changed all of the company names again. Yeah. So I'll have to fix that for next episode. In uh, Dalua we are also on P4 already. Just behind one other Fuinian company. Okay. So let's head to the track and let's see how quick the 1.1 liter version really is. And here we are at the starting line with our big 1.1 liter engine. And the car does what it does best. It is named the Porcellino by the people. The little pig because it's wiggling its tail and squealing like a pig. And to be honest, this version now really feels like a sports car. It feels very, very quick. And that's mostly, again, due to lack of grip. But now it really accelerates. And with all of the panels shaking here in BMG, it really feels like you're going really fast and making progress along the track. So I'm really looking forward to see how much faster this one is than our previous attempts. But yeah, with power also comes liability. It's quite a handful and I cannot wait until we can get rid of our solid axle rear suspension and maybe get some limited slip diff mounted. So with this engine I really think this platform is at its limit and we should not mount the V8 into this one. Not without any major modifications and any great idea to find grip. It is fun, it is very controllable, it is nimble, you can place it wherever you like, it will follow your inputs and move all over the track, so it's predictable but difficult, so I'd say it's definitely at home on these mountain stages. And the drivers back in the day would have had quite a lot of fun and probably also success with it. 
as do we as we approach the finish line and we are so much faster than our previous attempts. So previously we had a 353 for the 850 version and a 358 for the 750 version. So we made good progress, more progress next time. Thank you all for watching and bye bye.